Hey everybody, this is Kasu and welcome to another mod showcase. This time, we are going to go through the Sunken World. So the Sunken World is actually two mods in one. One is a map mod where you can experience uh, what literally a more aquatic uh, arc rather than your normal arc. And the Sunken World edition is a complementary mod with the Sunken World. So uh, there are, it provides its own unique mobs and also uh, some variants of other mobs which I'll show later but first things first uh, let's go through some interesting effects so I'm in creative mode currently and if I were to go out of creative mode and speed up time a little bit so as you can see from the bottom left I have finally gotten scurvy so this is a new env environmental effect. So what does scurvy do? So basically, scurvy is a disease gained from not eating fruits or vegetables after a period of time. This causes causes this causes blurry vision. Uh, I'm at stage one right now, so it's not that bad yet. Uh, and also loss of stamina. Also, whenever I'm damaged by anything, I have a thirty percent chance of. Uh, randomly bleeding due to internal weakness caused by the disease. So basically, it's fancy way of saying every time I, I get hit, I start thirty percent that I will bleed. Uh, and this uh, this disease is not contagious. So if you're playing with friends, no problem. Uh, and also does not pursue after death. And this can be cured by eating several fruits and vegetables. So you might be thinking, but fruits and vegetables are so hard to find. But don't worry, this mod isn't that insane. They are actually a very easy way to get uh, the vegetables or rather the fruits and I'll show you how later. Now, uh, from the environment, environmental effect, uh, let's go through the recipes. Uh, do note that the recipes uh, have some issues with it because there are currently four recipes in the mod that can be created. However, two of them uh, I can create in the Arc Survival Evolved version but for the Ascender version, I have no idea. I tried, try, I tried to create the other two but no avail. So one of the two that I could create is these two, the seafood gourmet and the chocolate smoothie. So how do you get the cured prime fish meat and the cured fish meat? Well, from the preserving bin. In the preserving bin, once you put the fish meat or whatever variants of meat you put inside, especially for this mod version, you put the fish meat and the prime fish meat, you will eventually get your cured meats. So how do you create the seafood gourmet? You need 30 cured prime fish meat, 2 tasso the squid tentacles, and 4 basilosaurus blubber. So what eating what does eating this give you? It gives you uh, immunity to pressure effect, which lasts for 10 minutes. So pressure is actually not in the game as of yet. It is a future or rather a up survival ascended uh, feature at this point as the ocean is going to be more than just exploring around as they will provide like water pressure and other stuff. The tropical, the tropical smoothie will improve underwater visibility, increase swimming speed, and increase health regen and also reduces stamina consumption for 5 minutes. So how do you create it? This requires 15 angel berries, 2 crab nuts, 15 spine fruits, and 15 curl beans. If now that sounds Anything familiar, don't worry, I'll go through them later also. Now, the two other items that I wasn't able to create was actually one, purified water. So to get purified water, if you take the filled water jar or canteen and you put it inside the cooking pot. After a while, they will produce raw salt. The second thing I couldn't make is vegan spaghetti. Vegan spaghetti is you take uh, basically all the seaweeds in the mod itself. Uh, I'll say the names now. I apologize in advance. Uh, 10 cereal wheat, 10 flavor wheat, 10 magna wheat, 10 vinu wheat, 25 seagrass, and 12 kelp. This will create a vegan spaghetti which cures all diseases and gives immunity to diseases for 5 minutes. Uh, unfortunately, uh, both the purified water and the biggest spaghetti, as I said again, are not able to be crafted. Now, uh, on to the resource converter. 
Uh, apologies, I have some difficulties uh, accessing that one there. So I'm going to access this one here. So this resource converter actually converts resources from uh, the vanilla game to the sunken world. So I'll go through each of them and I'll actually show you where to get them, uh, where to get all of these items. So first up is curl bean, which is literally bananas. So this is a variant of the rock carrot, or rather you can use the rock carrot to convert into uh, this curl bean. So to find curl beans, uh, you have to take a look at these tall trees. Uh, they may look very similar to all of the random trees in Ark, but I assure you they are not, as I'm going to show you by taking out a hatchet and cutting it down. So, as I'm hitting this, as you can see, every time I hit this tree, I will have a chance to actually pick up the curl beans. So next up is the ice chunk. This ice chunk, while holding an inventory, can actually reduce the speed of uh, your food decay and to make it you just have to have 10 stones to convert to water but if you want to find it out in the wild uh, it's off here in the coal area now you must be thinking to yourself where are the ice chunks where are the notes the all notes to actually get this ice chunk well the all notes are here literally on this piece of thing so, as you can see, once you harvest it, uh, you will lose your footing and you also just drop into the ice cold water. But, you have your ice chunk. Now, uh, I'm not too sure how the ice chunk works because I'm currently holding one in my inventory and I just checked uh, my curl bean didn't really change its timing. So, I'm not sure how that works and yeah. It's a cool resource to have though. Up next is this particular thing, the seashell. So the seashell is actually just a replacement of the chitin. And if you want to make the seashell, uh, you can find it on beaches or molluscs with shells on it. So where do you find it? Literally, like go anywhere on the beach and you see this shell here. Just pick it up and that's the seashell. Up next is C scale. So where do you find C scale? Well, C scale is actually obtained by killing the mods dinosaur, and after killing it and you harvest it, you will collect C scales from it. But I'm not going to show you any of the creatures yet, so as to not spoil for what's further up ahead. So up next is seagrass. But in order to show seagrass, I also have to show you the vino wheat, the somni wheat, magna wheat. Flavor wheat and the seru wheat. So seagrass is basically the fiber of this uh, map. However, you still can collect fiber from the map. As I said, that seagrass is collected from seaweeds. Uh, same goes for the all the other seaweeds here. You are this is all collected. Uh, these are all variants from the berries, and they can be all collected from seaweeds. And you might be thinking, oh, so I need to enter the ocean to collect them? Uh, not exactly. Uh, there are notes like this one here that are way above water level and you can just walk over there and press E as you do and you can collect all the different kinds of seaweed and the seaweed's effects are all similar to how the normal berry effects are for example uh, vino wheat is basically tinto berry and it is tasty and can be used to make red dye. So I assume that it's actually a replacement for the tinto berry for the ocean mice. Now, up next is reeds. So funny enough, reeds is not where you think it will be. Like I know in Ark that there are multiple places with reeds that you can pick up and they just convert to fiber. However, I'm not sure whether if this is a bug or what, but uh, the reeds are actually inside the ocean itself and it comes from a particular plant which I'm going to show you right now. Yeah, it comes from this 
blue color plant it gives reeds as you can tell rather than sea grass and also uh, i don't want to show that uh look at how beautiful the underwater area is yep all right now back to the mod now up next is uh limestone so limestone can be converted from stone and it is a hefty chunk it's basically a chunk of stone that is made from grinding corals which is right here too which can be made by co like combining blue red and yellow color coloring and stone but all of these resources honestly you don't have to care because you can actually get them from uh, the map itself so when you find both of these well to find coral you literally have to find well corals like all these are corals and you take something and mine next to it you'll get not only limestone but also some coral along with it now up next is kelp kelp is literally uh how do i explain this it's like the mutton for uh herbivores both land and sea so how do you find it and then it's actually pretty easy to find because you don't have to kill anything or whatever or like harvest anything you just need to go and go to the ocean and pick it up but where do you find this kelp well you find kelp obviously in the ocean but from one specific kind of plant and not in large quantity too as you'll see so you find kelp not from these or that blue color plant there you find kelp from this long uh i guess kelp where once you collect near them you have a chance to collect kelp as you can see i already collected one kelp from that like one singular kelp from that so it's not a very easy resource to harvest however there are but some mod, um some creatures that is able to help you uh collect a bit more than usual one of which is actually one of the modded creatures and the other one is actually the castorite or the beaver so you can pick your choice on which creature you want to uh, use to collect it and that was weird up next is the crab nut so the crab nut is actually a replacement for the several root so where do you find the crab nut from this particular kinds of tree uh, or you can tell just palm trees you know yeah not the tall ones the tall ones still give coping you need to find these short ones the literal the literal coconut trees and if you harvest it you can have a chance to get a crab nut and a random raptor come and beat your bite your face you know now next up is angel fruit which is literally mangoes so where do you find angel fruits and it's also a replacement for the citronel or lemon so you find angel fruits probably the easiest because its tree is actually very unique looking like its trees look like these a bit slanted to the right and while harvesting it you have a chance to collect angel berries and lastly talking about the ocean who could forget the pineapple because of spongebob but in this case it's called a spine fruit however the spine fruit cannot be found on the island i have asked the discord and they said that spine fruits aren't implemented on uh Ark survival evolved version but it's implemented in the ascended version so unfortunately for evolved players you cannot have you cannot harvest spine fruits you can however use long use long grass to convert them now that the resources are done let's go on to new two new things in the mota and pesto first up is this antitoxin Antitoxin is created using a absorbent substrate, biotoxin from jellyfish, and stimulants. What this creates is a consumable that grants you immunity to shocking stun for 20 minutes. So goddamn useful because I fucking hate jellyfish. Next up is shark repellent. So shark repellent is basically uh, an item or consumable that will make you invisible. Uh, to sharks and other aggressive fish as long as you don't attack them or get too close to them so how do you create it well you use bug repellent with seagrass and that will create your shark repellent so basically this is just a underwater version of the bug repellent now up next is this coral work table so the coral work table is the mod's own work table which you should use uh you should use when playing the mod this works as how a 
workbench or uh, crafting bench works but with a new item inside a few new items inside so you can create the sunken trident skin skin okay that's a funny typo and you also can create all the different creature saddles in the uh, mod itself and obviously even though it costs as a skin there's actually a working uh, trident in the game so the trident is basically uh i'll show it i'll show it off later actually so now that we have one gone through the work table let's go through the items so as you can see there are six or rather five items including one skin and the first item is the primitive coral dagger as you can see the coral dagger looks pretty sick so how do you craft it so you craft it with uh 18 coral 16 height and four metal not metal ingots just metal and you and what does a coral dagger do it is basically used to harvest skill from local fauna and also a small chance to inflict bleed up next have you ever always wondered why on earth is there do i have so much megalodon teeth because i've been on a killing spree and my creature just keep picking them up what can i do with it other than let it clutter in my inventory because it kind of feel like a waste to throw them away well look no further this is a thing the shark tooth arrow so instead of putting a flint on the end of the on the tip of the arrow you use a shark tooth instead or rather use a megalodon teeth tooth instead and this will actually has a beneficial effect as it may or as it can cause bleeding so how do you create this uh arrow well literally just fiber attach but instead of flint megalodon one megalodon tooth Next up is this thing, the Shocking Trank Spearboat. The Shocking Trank Spearboat is basically the Shocking Tranquilizer, but on a Spearboat instead. Spearboat instead. So how do you create it? Well, just put a Shocking Tranquilizer Dart on a Spearboat, uh, similar to how you put a Tranquilizer Dart on a Spearboat. Honestly speaking, I have no idea why Ark didn't implement this when they implemented this. Like, come on, it's just one more tier, right? It's stupid. Next up is the trident the trident is well as you can see a spear and this deals increased damage to aquatic creature and massive increased damage to fish with this i will take uh, i will test it out also i will be putting on the skin just for fun so this is how it looks like with the skin and it looks pretty pretty sick and i'm gonna test it out on a creature that i can't find because god this place is barren okay all right so uh, I'll be testing out this spear on this Iguanodon. As it per hit, I'm dealing around 50 damage, and for the throw wise, I deal 57 damage. Now let's try it on an aquatic creature that is alone, preferably. Now, uh, now to showcase the aquatic creature or the fishes, uh, I am currently in this weird pond here. Nope. And if I were to use this on this particular new fish, this particular new fish, as you can tell, it dealt 433 damage. So it is just it does do massive in uh, increased damage against aquatic or at least fishes. And if I were to throw a spear at it, it literally just deals like 500 plus damage. So yeah, uh, pretty good if you want to use spears to actually collect fish or use fish as your main source of food. Also, it's just very unique to have this kind of uh, weapon inside the inside a map that is literally ocean. Now, up next is this, the Urchin Spike. So, what is the Urchin Spike and where do you get it from? As you can tell from the name, it's probably gotten from a sea urchin. So, the Urchin Spike is actually a free ammo, essentially, that can be used as a replacement uh, on a harpoon gun. For the spear boat so this actually funny enough uh brings to my next part of the mod which is actually the creatures but before that let's go through the armor so what is this armor what the fuck so what is this armor so this armor is actually the c scale armor when wearing fully 
uh, this uh, very fully, the C skill armor has a set bonus which regenerates stamina while not moving. And uh, it also increases your swim speed for each uh, piece that is equipped. So for trying out sake. So this is me swimming uh, without the C skill armor. As you can tell, it's just the standard pretty slow. And also my stats are currently like this. I did not touch my oxygen or anything. Now let's try on with the C skill armor. So with the full C skill armor, as you can tell, I am moving faster a little bit, as you see from this. And also uh you look terrifying. And as you can tell with full set it has a 50% uh swim speed bonus. Additionally, the set bonus actually regenerate which allows you to regenerate stamina while not moving applies to underwater too. And if you're wondering like if that's if is that the only armor in the game or rather in the mod? Uh currently yes. But no worries, because in the future there are actually a two more set armor coming out, which I cannot say anything about because it has not come out yet. So yeah, this is the current only the currently the only armor in the game thus far. Now, up next, as I said, is the new creatures. But before I go through the new creatures, let's take a look at what have what they did to the older creatures or the creatures that we are more familiar with. So let's uh start out pretty chill from the trailer bite to the Poella cans. Slowly we'll go through all of it to the most menacing Mosasaurus. Now before I begin, uh just a quick note, these are all variants similar to how Aberration has variants. And all of them are all sunken variants. So let's begin with the first one, which is the trailer bite. As you can tell, it just was a normal trailer bite, but it has a very nice glowing iridescent uh, color to it. Up next is the koala cans. As I throw inside the water. As you can tell, the koala can does have a different pattern, but it looks still the same. Up next is the Ictionis or the Dolphin. And if I can as you can see the Ictionis actually has a much more vibrant pattern to it. And in this case like a zebra. Next up is the uh, Electrophorus or basically the eel. And as you can see the eel is feels or rather looks slightly longer. Oh shit. And for some reason, the one I got is pink. So yeah, that's that's good, I guess. Now, up next is the Menta. The Sunken Menta. As you can see from the Sunken Menta, it looks more like an alien, actually. And it looks pretty sick. It look, uh, look, at, look at that pattern. Like the strike pattern. And up next is this particular guy, which is basically a Eurypterid. So, as you know, Eurypterids can only crawl on the ground in the normal arc. This guy, however, can swim. So yeah, if you guys are currently playing this particular uh, mod or had and encountered this particular sunken variant, be very careful. The ground is not going to save you. You're going to sleep in the water. Well, next up is the anglerfish. And as you can tell, the anglerfish looks very very colorful and also very different as you can tell there's like three angles now because i don't actually remember the angler fish in uh the original arc having only having only one angler and this guy has three so three times the food i guess as you can tell the last one saw looks all of the, all these creatures looks very vibrant and actually very cool and these are actually pretty easy to use to spot or rather explore the depths of this ocean with which is needed because it's an ocean mod. Now, next up, uh, we don't have to be in the ocean, but this only can be found in the ocean, which is this guy, the coral golem. Uh, basically, your typical golem, however, instead of rocks, it's actually covered in coral, which is actually pretty damn cool. I look at that. In fact, let me. Yep. Let's take a look at that big boy. Especially the front part, this looks like his brain, and that's very very cool and disgusting too. 
Now up next is uh, I'm Bias, hence my favorite, the Spinosaurus. And the Spinosaurus, as you can tell, has a more ocean variant or ocean look to it. It has a flat, it has a more thicker but muscular tail. Stop moving, come on. Now as you can tell, this uh, Spinosaurus, unlike the ones that we know of, is actually more adapted to be in the ocean as it has small osteoderms on it, it has a much more cool looking scale to it, its spine is smaller or like, uh, you know, thinner, so it's more hydrodynamic, and most importantly, if you look at its front, it has a much more thick neck, or like a duck bill kind of neck. Yeah, so this is actually, from what I saw, the most different one of them all, and it's actually pretty cool. Now, up next is the Basilosaurus, which I'm going to go to open waters for. Yep, as you can tell, the Basilosaurus looks more like an orca, actually. And it's... I, I, I know I'm repeating, repeating myself by saying it's cool and all over, over again. But honestly, the redesigns of them are, looks really, really good. Next up is the Dumpteel Steers, which looks like a... What's that? Name, what's that name called? Uh, lionfish. Like, look at it. Instead of just like making it, you know, colorful, and, like just vibrant and whatnot, they actually remade it to look more like a lionfish. And that is very, very interesting. Second last, because the last one I can't capture in a ball, is this guy. The, the, oh god, the Mosasaur. I did not know it's black and red. And it looks like that. Honestly, it looks way more menacing than our original Mosasaur. Kind of scared. And for the last but not least, we have this, the lead Sigtis. Literally every new new art player's worst nightmare. Now you can see that worst nightmare coming towards you. All bright and blue. But all, but again, all of these redesigns are really really cool. They do not just like you know slap on a new color or pattern or it. They actually change some of how it looks. And that I can re I am really appreciative of that actually. So yeah, that is all of the uh sunken variants of the creature. Now let's go through all these new creatures or the new sunken creatures that we have. Now that we have gone through all of the sunken variants of the vanilla creatures, let's go through what new creatures this mod adds. In total, we have around eleven, ten. We have ten new creatures that is added to this mod. Most of them are from the ocean because that makes sense so first up is this creature this creature is called the Sorictis. so it's it's a that's a long creature and it actually reminds me a lot of like the the fish that uh, i think some people eat called the sauri like s-a-u-r-y i have no idea whether that's the inspiration or not and yeah, this is the creature, and I'm... You can't ride it, unfortunately. And I'm not too sure what it does. However, I do have a wiki here, to, or rather the Discord group here, to read about it. Okay, so, the Saric this, um, I'm gonna read out the whole entire paragraph. If uh, you want to read it, the mod page actually has a discussion where they show you how what are the taming methods and everything on it so uh the sorictis is as follows taming those little nightmares of the sea can be found mostly in large open expanses like the open oceans they can be tamed but not ridden because they are relatively small the best way to tame them is via and classic a classic ko tame they feed on the same cable as capro suckers abilities these medium-sized predators can be put into the aquarium, a new uh, the sunken world structure, and like couple suckers, they're able to smash small to medium-sized creatures and players and drag them into the depths of uh, the sunken world. I can't really show you where what where is it because I don't see where is it. Like where the fuck did you go? But yeah, that was the sorry this. Up next is the lepidotes. Yeah, up next is the Lepidotes. Uh, the Lepidotes is basically, from my understanding, it's the Koala Cans, but just a different variant of the Koala Cans. And uh, 
The summary reads as a large, a relatively large bony fish that can be found basically everywhere in schools thanks to their incredibly rapid reproductive cycle. Its scale gives a moderate amount of armor but are also one of the main reasons they are hunted by human. Can be placed in the aquarium. And honestly, this aquarium thing, I don't see it. I, I don't know what they are talking about when they say aquarium because I really don't see it. So, uh... To actually showcase to you these guys, uh, I'm going to kill them and I'm going to take this knife and harvest it. As you can see when I harvested it, I got 84 C scales which again is to use to craft this armor and also it's just like the height variant of the ocean creatures. This can be used for most creatures actually, if I hit the story key, it also drops the C scale. Now up next is a much more interesting creature. It's not a raptor, if you were seeing the icon. It's uh, a sea urchin. So, I, I don't really know what you can do while taming it. But uh, if you do kill it, unfortunately, uh, you do not get uh, uni. You rather get, you rather you get urchin spikes and chitin. So, sea urchins are actually found literally everywhere in the ocean but they're all hiding in you know under some rocks or whatever or like in between rocks as long as they're actually on land so you can actually go and try and harvest them and honestly they're spike walls so just be careful about that now next up is the more a more interesting creature is the ulti spinex this guy is basically a t-rex of the ocean and you can ride it, I just need the saddle. Okay. So, what can the Ulti Spinex do? Let me take a look. So, uh, before I show before I uh, show you what it can do, uh, I'll read off the taming. Alright, I read off the wiki page. Taming. Ulti Spinex can be found in the jungles of the Sunken World. Throughout the day, they will periodically sit down and relax. They are tamed like shadow mains. You must sneak up on them while they are doing this and feed them the same food a Basilosaurus takes. It prefers fish meat. So abilities wise, when tamed, Altis Phylax is a great semi-aquatic mount that serves as an in-between between a Baronyx and a Spinosaurus with abilities that negates pack buffs and allowing it to stand up to groups of enemies, which is very good because the ocean is full of schools of fish. So let's go over the abilities. As you can tell, on land, it's pretty decently fast. In the water, it's also pretty decently fast. So as I say, it is actually a good mix between both the spinal and the baronyx and also on it honestly its size is more spinal size so with this bear here i'm gonna try out left click is a bite attack right click is a claw swipe is what the fuck that bear just disappeared so this is a size comparison to a rex as you can tell it's not that much bigger and if you right click is a slow claw attack that deals knockback however i think the rex is too big to be knocked back and but it does deal higher damage than not really actually and also uh the claw attack apparently they say it depends the hit depends on which direction you take so you're looking for the right you use the right claw to get the left you use the left claw the c is a ref is called rafu chomp it inflicts a debuff that reduces damage or reduces the speed target by 50% 50 uh, 50 for 10 seconds. Larger targets require more bite for the effect to be successfully applied. This attack has a 6 second cooldown and the debuff cannot be applied for another 30 seconds after it has finished. So let's try. Uh, they did say that yes, a larger creature requires more so let me just... As you can see... As you can see, it's inflicted with the debuff crippling build-up. So let's see how much build-up it can take. Once it has 3 crippling build-up, it will ultimately be crippled. And as you can tell, it is very slow now. Now let's uh, get away from this guy because you know this guy's useless. Actually, since I'm Penguin's here, I can show you the claw ability better. As you can see, the, the smaller creature, the further the knockback. Now, left control is General's command. 
This basically lets the Ultis Finite let, let loose a powerful roar that applies a debuff against pet creatures, reducing the damage by 20%, removing their gang buff, and making them 20% more vulnerable to all sources. This also fears uh this also clears fear effect from itself. So if I were to just roar. There we go. Uh, as you can tell, the raw isn't exactly very impactful, so eh. Now, next up is this guy. Uh, the Acrophysella. Which requires to be underwater. So, this is the Acrophysella, or uh, it's how you see it, a beluga whale. So, what can this guy do? Well, I'm gonna read off the wiki again. The Acrophysella. Taming in the wild, Acrophysella spawns in pots containing both adults and sub-adults, the latter of which appearing at any growth rate from baby to adolescent. Both adults and sub-adults are tameable, but require different methods. Adults can be passively tamed with superior cables for max effectiveness, followed by raw mutton or raw prime meat. Sub-adults can be tamed through a process similar to the taming of the Hyenodon, with the survivor being able to interact with the Acro every 30 seconds to play with it. This process gives taming progress each time, but deals a heavy blow to taming effectiveness. Abilities Once your new playful comrade has been acquired, uh, it is able to gather the help of other adult acrophysal that helps in the dangerous uh, this English. So, uh, the, uh, it has an ability that uh, basically call out to other adult acrophysal to help in dangerous situations and once they are in the group they gain a pack buff that is similar to an allosaurus one of the main abilities is the sonar detection that shows nearby creatures similar to a parasaurus scan and this can be used as a mobile sentry once the acro is unmounted so i'm going to show off the ability now left click i'll use it on this bastard left click is a bite attack that deals quite a hefty amount of damage actually right click is a sonar ability that will scan for targets which kind of useless since I have the awesome spy glass. C key is a headbutt that is strong enough to stun creature for 10 seconds. This effect can however cannot be stacked. So let's try it on that Basilosaurus again. I'm here, you nice looking Orca wheel. I hmm. That's weird. Hold on a second, is it Q? Um, for some reason, I can't get the C key to work. So, I'm not sure is that a... Is that a... Bug or what? Uh, however, the next ability is a control key, which basically calls out to calls out for help. However, I just use it, so now I'm tired. Uh, if you saw it just now... Good, I guess. And yeah, that is the Acro Yeah. Um, so this creature, uh, unfortunately, at the time of re uh, recording this, Garuga has made a variant of it already. So uh, I'm not too sure how that works. But uh, if you are playing on Survival Evolve, uh, this guy is uh, basically a early mount tame. Because, let me read it out to you. So the Anomalocaris, to tame an animal, uh, Anomalocaris, one first needs uh, to lower its health to below 20%. Once below its threshold, uh, the creature will begin to emit an orange cloud around itself and behave much more aggressively. If the survivor is not wearing a scuba tank, it will latch onto their back, immobilizing it. In order to render the uh, creature unconscious, one must consume narcotics until they fall asleep. The, this creature has a low topper, as you can tell, it's like 105 only. And follow suit, follow suit soon after. Once uh, this creature has fallen off, the tame process may be continued using the standard knockout tame procedure, basically put food inside. The most effective food for this guy is the Ammonite Bao, ew, followed by Leech Blood, Raw Meat, then Blood Bags. This guy, uh, unfortunately, is not a good fighter. But he is your early game tame because he is your living scuba tank. But you must keep note that one uh, should be aware that any chest armor they are wearing while and 
and while this creature is attached to will slowly lose its durability. So yeah, this is your early mount uh for exploration in the water actually. And yeah, that is that is the Anal Meadow Carry is what I'm named by the way. Up next is a turtle. This is the Hanno Dust. And the Hanno Dust you can be can be ridden without a saddle. So what can this guy do? Well, let me read it off to you. The Hanno Dust is a level turtle bender uh, li that lives in the mangrove swamps primarily, but can also be found in seagrass plains. They are a passive tame which takes berries, series, and regular kibble. When tamed, you can ride them without a saddle. Their back is also a buildable platform which allows you to use them as a mobile base. And as you can tell, it's actually quite flat and white. They can also be entre entrenched on a solid surface. Basically, they can go on to land, as I'm going to try to show right now. As you can tell, I am on land. Oh, okay. So, uh, sorry, what they mean by entrenched on solid surface, not, uh, that, it's not like saying that uh, it can go on land. So, to test out the entrenched ability, what the fuck is that? I need to go to the bottom of this ocean. Now that I'm here, if I, uh, the control says, if I press control click, it will borrow itself. But it requires a flat surface, so I assume that one there. I can't seem to make this guy ability to dig himself a whole work. I'm not too sure what's the reason though. Yeah, so actually if it's able to if you're able to make it work, uh it has the ability to actually create a uh so basically, once it's borrowed, it gains a 50% damage resist against most type of damage, and also creates an aura bubble underwater which regenerates oxygen to nearby players. And the aura itself only encompasses a sphere around the handles itself. And as you can tell from me spamming my left click just now, the left click is a bite attack. However, they say that control click is actually the borrow and unborrow. So I'm not too sure how it works because I'm unable to make it work. So next up is uh this creature, the Mater this is uh, it looks it looks it looks miserable to be very honest. And from the looks of it, it's uh just a normal fish. But which you can ride. But let's see what it can do. So left click is a bite attack. Right, left click and right click is a bite attack. And that's it, I guess. But let's spawn a Rex underwater to test that out. As you can tell, left click is a bite attack that dealt like 20 damage. I'm wondering if the right click actually has a different. Uh, however, the turn radius of this guy is absolutely shit. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm not too sure how this guy works, but uh, he's a pretty speedy swimmer, honestly, but a horrible attacker. As you can tell, the biting doesn't really work very well. So yeah, that's the meta pieces. Now we're on to our last two creatures. First up is this guy. The sp Spire, Spirina, let's call it that. So the Spirina, or I'm just going to call it the Hamid Shark because it basically was, that's why it is. Is as I said, the Hamid Shark. So let me read out to you uh, the wiki. Taming. While Spirina are traditional knockout tames, one shouldn't expect to be able to take down without a fight. These sharks are formidable creatures and will retaliate fiercely against any who provoke them. Once unconscious, Spionat can be fed regular cables for maximum taming effectiveness. Otherwise, they will accept raw mutton, prime fish meat, and prime meat with a, at a decent rate. So, abilities wise, Spionat are good early game mounts with a decent fighting capability. They spot a natural 30% reduction to any incoming damage and are immune to stunning attacks meant to dismount players. They are able to equip with a two seater saddle for additional protection which doubles as a mobile smithy, as you can tell, here. 
Furthermore, Strena has the ability to act as living metal detector, showing the location of nearby metal nodes after sending out a pulse. Now to talk about abilities, let's go test out this creature. So as you can tell, it's pretty speedy. And if I... The left click is a standard bite attack that deals moderate damage. What is moderate damage? Let me try on this car. Yep, it deals 49 damage. I uh, do know that these, this freaking spider crap thing uh, does have... If I'm not remember correctly, does have armor. So yeah, just plus a few numbers. Right click is hit bash. Slows down enemies and use a high amount of damage. Can be used to farm mineral notes like metal and coral. So let's try out on... Uh, where the hell? Let's try on that, that, that guy, why not? So right click. Yep, does a hit button. Now, C key is the aforementioned a metal detection. And as you can tell, uh, when metal detection is deactivated, uh, it doesn't glow, but once it's activated, it actually starts glowing a lot more. I'm not too sure how the metal detection works, so I'm gonna swim around a bit and I'll skip to it. Ah! As you can see, uh, it, it literally just have a blinking metal motion. And if I right click it, I will harvest both limestone and metal. So this is actually a mix of a good armored creature, a harvester, basically a, an aquatic ankylosaurus. However, this guy does not have the passive of the Ankylosaurus, which reduces metal but it does reduce a little bit so yeah that's uh the spy the spear nah oh uh before i continue this is the full effect of uh having like almost max level scurvy like this is like stage 2 scurvy so as you can tell my vision is getting a bit more wonkier by the by the as time passes but uh, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna show you the night and day difference once I harvest this tree. So this is how it looks uh, with scurvy. I'm like have rainbow vision or something. This is how I look without scurvy. Normal vision, no rainbow vision. Now last creature is this guy. The Ambulocetus. Looks like a seal. I'm just gonna call it a seal. I don't even know whether this is a real creature or not. So, I can tell this amb the Ambulocetus looks like this. And, oh, one more thing to mention. Uh, for some reason, you can pet this guy. And he goes like that. And he also gives himself the fast learner bug. And before I continue onwards, uh, let me read out the wiki. So, taming. To tame an Ambulocetus, you first need to travel to the dangerous ice caps. The, those cold and unforgiving regions house the whale both water and on land. For armor is recommended. To tame Ambulo, your best and only bet is the KO method. It eats regular kibble and any kinds of meat, raw, mutton, and prime meat is the best. Abilities. Your newfound best buddy is an excellent early and mid-game travel mount that can travel sea and land. Ambulocetus possess, possesses a buff that increases its movement and attack speed by 30%. The saddle gives the giddy suit effect that uh, increases your chance to hide from dangerous creature. So, left click ability is a standard bite attack. That deals like 77 damage. C key, uh, on the wiki it's wrong because they say right click, but C key is the metabolic rush ability. So once activated, I have increased speed uh, and also increased damage, which I'm going to try out on this penguin here. I can't really tell what's the difference for damage-wise though, because it's, it feels the same, unfortunately. But, never mind. This ability actually uh, is toggleable. And for the downside, it actually... Uh, increases the amount of food consumed and lastly is is right click but unfortunately I already used the right click uh, and the right click is actually a buff ability that gives itself fast learner buff similar to the distro saw also it has a passive ability that insulates uh, eggs nearby like the dimetrodon except it can be used in the water and one more thing to note about these two creatures since they are here is they can sit 
Like, they can, this guy can plop on the ground, and this guy can also plop on the ground. Like so. And before I before I go, uh, before I end this smart showcase, this is the this is the current map, or rather the finalized map for Ark Survival Evolves version. Because I seriously doubt he will continue to develop this version and uh just focus on Ark Survival Ascended. However, as you can tell, the only the top part is completed and most of the other stuff is in the ocean. However, there's one thing that uh the map is not updated to is that thing over there. As I move towards this particular location and I pull out the map, as you can see, uh that location has nothing. It's just ocean, right? Not exactly. So once you come here, um there is plants and trees that you can make your base in. And the ocean here is also pretty much well made and already made and created. So uh don't be fooled by the map thinking that that's the only place to explore. This part here is also uh worthy to be explored. If uh and also set up base if you want to. However, uh as you can tell from this red line here. That is truly the part of the map which uh, you can cross over, however, uh, there's nothing in there, as it's just a empty void. However, there are still some creatures that will spawn inside there, so you know maybe you want to go inside and tame a creature or so. And yeah, that's it. This That's the end of this particular mod showcase for the Sunken World. Uh, I hope that uh, you guys can try it out. Uh, because again, this is a very unique take on the Ark Survival uh, map mods as this focuses mainly on the ocean, which uh, a lot of people are kind of afraid of, including my friend, I think. I don't, I'm not too sure about that. But uh, that being the case, I will end the mod showcase here. Hope you guys enjoyed this mod showcase and I hope to see you guys in the next video or stream. Bye!